We got a roller, dude. Yeah. What's up, everybody? I'm John. I'm Isaac. And we are already eight hours into this episode of Cars and Cameras on our four-cylinder hot rod cozy coupe build. A lot of figuring. Packaging is tight, so we have to get every single system worked out really before we make the first cut or weld. Here's what we have. So to get the right stance, we're adding a drop axle. I fabricated one out of wood just to see the look and uh, I, I'm happy with the results. Oh, and why are we doing this out of cut and welded square tubing and not one bent piece of tubing? We will explain in a minute. Cut away, buddy. I had a brilliant idea. We don't have a, a welding table or anything, so the front axle, if, if we uh, weld it up on this crooked floor, it's gonna be crooked. So I'm like, what would be a good precision, flat piece of metal that we can uh, line the thing up on? And I'm like, a cylinder head. And so I went to one of my 350 heads and they're, they're a little small and I was like, I need a big fat, flat surface. So. I went to my junk pile and got an old flathead and I'm cleaning up the gaskets or the surface and we're going to use this to make sure that the uh, axle's flat when we weld it. Awesome. Yeah. Oh dude, we are spot on dude. Excellent. and a quarter. Why did we use square tubing, rectangular tubing, and not one bent pipe? Uh, because we had more, we have more contact surface on these hubs. Uh, I believe that it made these uh, stronger. If we had the pipe, we would only come up about halfway, and then right here would be the weak part. The front subframe is tacked, it's flat and level. Now we need to take it home and weld it up with a good welder. Just to let y'all know, no flat heads were harmed in this build. So I got our front axle welded up. Now we're gonna chop some length off of the frame, tack it up and mock everything up again. All right, now comes the fun part. We're gonna try to figure out the steering on this bad boy. It would be cake if we were using a 212, but now we're using a Monster 550. So we're pretty limited on room for getting steering from the front axle to where we're gonna be steering from. We're gonna be using parts and components from gopowersports.com. They have all kinds of steering options, uh, more than just what we have displayed here. But it's really nice to have different tie rod lengths uh, that you can choose from depending on the size of your project, whether you're building something from scratch or you're just making repairs or modifications to an existing go-kart, Go Power Sports can hook you up for all your go-kart, mini bike, and some side-by-side -side accessories. So be sure to check out these parts at a link in the description of this video and enter Go Power Sports in-store credit giveaway and let them know that Cars and Cameras sent you. So I made some quick and dirty spacers out of PVC pipe. We can go ahead and throw the wheels on for mock-up purposes. These racing wheels and tires are also available from gopowersports.com. So let's figure out the steering. We need to decide how to set up the steering. We can either go through the center with a steering shaft, 
and the engine will have to be jacked about two inches higher than it is right now or three inches <laughs> yeah three inches or we go through the side where the engine will stay nice and low like it is now um, but the main problem with that is that the oil sump is going to be lower than the actual frame <laughs> I didn't want to cut out a lot of the plastic because that's some of the strength. So uh, heat it up and mold it the way I want it. roller well let me let me get a little bit more welding done uh, that's not good gotta fix that yeah, we'll put a stop. I think that's because it's uh, put, pulled in so far. I want to uh, come out with this some. Yeah, we'll put a stop in it. That's a win, dude. That's a win. We got a roller, dude. Yeah. So it's a simple steering setup. It's what we have on the rat rod wagon. Close. Yeah, it's close, but I think it fits the overall old school hot rod look. Yeah. Now, I, I, I do realize the steering wheel straight up and down basically. Actually with the front end diving down, it's actually leaning forward a little bit. But one of my favorite movies, can I mention this? Yeah. One of my favorite movies, American Graffiti, uh, you had John Milner in there next to a fella in an old tea bucket. And if you look closely at that tea bucket, the steering wheel straight instead of cocked back. Uh, so there were old early hot rods that had their steering wheel straight like this. Yeah, and I think it's going to be easier to hold on to, gives us more leg room, and it's more support. It's it more was roomy. easier to mount. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not as pretty though. I wish I wish we had it tilted back, but uh, we're just so limited on space on this thing. Yeah, this. <laughs> I it, wonder why we're limited on space. <laughs> it's made for a three-year-old. <laughs> so we got a rolling chassis on the Cozy Coop Hot Rod. Next time, we're gonna add some frame horns off the front to help protect the steering. We're gonna weld up the chassis with our good welder. We're gonna work on the seat and work on engine mounts. I hope you guys have enjoyed the series so far. This is honestly one of my favorites in a long time. This is up there. It's just so old school <laughs> Cars and Cameras, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so leave a thumbs up if you are enjoying it. Subscribe to Cars and Cameras for future updates on the Cozy Coop Hot Rod and all of our other projects. Of course, support the channel by picking up a t-shirt or a hoodie at cars-cameras.com. And check us out in between videos for sneak peeks on our future projects at, at Cars and Cameras Reviews on Facebook and Instagram. And for Ike... Check me out at Isaac, it'll be fine. That's right. Of course, gopowersports.com for all of your go-kart and mini bike and power sports needs. Thank you for watching. I think we have a little bit of an awkward gap right now in between the back of the transmission and the and the front of the, the Cozy Coupe. We did that intentionally. One, to leave plenty of room for jack shaft for sprockets and stuff. And two, so you can still see the face of the Cozy Coupe. We didn't want to jack up the body to make it look like it was lifted and we didn't want the engine to be right on top of the face.
So that's why we did that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.